Hello, everybody. Oh. Uh, I'm definitely not the only one type. <laughs> uh. Okay, uh, I will tell a little bit about context uh, why I'm here. Actually, I was invited um, by Lokomotiva and Slobodne Veze to make kind of semi-artistic, semi-critical uh, research of the art scene. Uh, here in Macedonia, uh, because I was dealing with these issues in the local context of Serbia, mostly, partly in Montenegro. And um, I spent here 10 days, what is a really kind of limited uh, period for uh, such an ambitious uh, plan. And um, actually, the result uh, which I uh, have after, uh, th th that I actually uh, coming out now with uh, after 10 days is it, it it is really restricted somehow not only uh, by the short period but it is also the projection of uh, my uh, position in general uh, about these things and also it is uh, something that is in a process it is not uh, finished actually yet and um, actually I I try to uh, extract some symptoms of the scene that I find crucial for the development of the scene at the moment in Macedonia. And uh, <clears throat> what I find the most important when I came here is this uh, relation between state institution and independent uh, art or cultural art institution because this is really something that is a part of the processes that are going on in all the region. Uh, this uh, interfering uh, um, uh, state institution and uh, independent institutions. And I find these um, relations very problematic in a many sense. And I'll try to uh, say firstly about this notion of independency in a cultural sphere in general, what is also provocative issue, uh, especially uh, if you would really like to understand what is going on in the moment, we need to a little bit go in the past to understand how uh, cultural scene is actually or was organized in the past according to this issue state or independent of the state. And what does it actually mean at all? Because here it's, it is very much used this word independent, independent, everything is a kind of independent. And, uh, and uh, to, to go in the past, we need to say uh, that uh, in the beginning of socialism, socialism, the idea of socialism was formed about something that is called kind of social, uh, social good. But that idea in uh, socialistic Yugoslavia was rejected at the very beginning, maybe uh, from the 60s, when Yugoslavia opened itself for a more market-oriented economy. Uh, from the 60s onward, and uh, that the, the regulation of economy uh, was firstly um, uh, uh, considered only service and retail trade uh, uh, areas, but not health system, culture, education, and this system, they were still part of the state controlled uh, system. And uh, I think with the culture, it's a really also provoking issue because uh, in socialism at 1974, the culture start being organized via C's. It uh, means self-managed interest communities. Uh, that's mean that actually uh, these organizations of culture could organize free exchange of work among workers in its own field. So that's mean that uh, cultural field was not totally dependent of the state, nor totally independent of the state. And it is really, oh, from the beginning, we could say this is a kind of uh, unclear, actually, how much state is controlling, and I think it's very much related about what Anna was uh, mentioning yesterday. She came out with the idea that uh, total field of culture was kind of uh, controlled with the state. 
from the state and so on. What is, uh, I wouldn't say this is totally true, but this ambivalent economic policy, let's say, uh, led to the kind of strange uh, actually result because it, it, it happened, for example, that some university professor uh, small, uh, uh, we're getting a smaller amount of money than some, for example, taxi driver and so on. Because free market, uh, because ta taxi driver uh, were operating through free market mechanisms and the professor was uh, in the some uh, very controlled, uh, uh, I mean, control in, from an economical point of view in the controlled area. Uh, so this is kind of injustice that uh, cultural workers somehow feel uh, uh, felt in the um, uh, socialistic system. And uh, I think this is kind of important because uh, much later during the 90s when independent cultural services were organized uh, on a much uh, higher scale, um, actually these highly educated workers, we actually the one who were the main uh, agitators for the uh, changing of the system because they were not fighting only for a free speech uh, uh, and so on. Uh, they were also fighting for a, um, for a deregulation of its own uh, field from the point of economy. And what is really important, they, they will actually require for the system in which they value will be recognized. And uh, th this is <clears throat> actually at the end always free market economy actually. And in the, ca um, the idea of independent culture in Macedonia from uh, 2000 onward had, uh, had been based on this separation uh, of culture from the official cu culture that exists under the auspice of the state and the dominant party. And in the beginning of the 2000, there was a huge EU, uh, EU optimism uh, here with the social democrats in power and so on. But 2006, when Gravsky came in power as a kind of really dominant and uh, kindly oppressive uh, party, a lot of uh, cultural organizations start to be organized as a kind of independent. So these activists were starting to organizing uh, themselves in kind of more organized form uh, uh, that are now registered as uh, NGOs or associations and so on. So, uh, so actually this group started the process of self-institutionalization uh, which played for a stateless policy just creating the spaces in which they would have the opportunity to show themselves. For example, since 2001, a lot, the most of these uh, most important art organization now that are existing in Skopje are formed like uh, uh, Contrapuk, Lokomotiva, Presto Exit, Furu, Budan Theater, and so on. There is a huge number of these associations, which in some moment started to organize themselves under uh, in a kind of association of uh, independent art scene, and this association uh, is called Yadro. Uh, but of course, uh, and Yadro is consists of, I think, 83 or something organization, but then there is a kind of switch that happened. Actually, some organization go out, some in, and actually, uh, this is a process that, uh, actually, it was a process where they start to be organized, actually. And this is really kind of interesting because uh, from some point we have a, a kind of a system of organ independent organizations that are uh, kind of uh, staying uh, for the stateless policy, to be kind of separated from the state, out of the state, and then at once we have a fight to be kind of recognized as an institution. An institution is always, um, kind of, um, I mean, a institution traditional, from the traditional perspective of this uh, idea is always based on a kind of preserving of the present uh, system, actually. And to be recognized by the state as an institution, uh, this was the one of the most uh, important goals that Yadro actually uh, brought uh, out, actually. And, uh, <clears throat> Of course, Yadro was organized uh, according to few goals, actually. One goal was to find a place 
to work for all these independent association and organization. The other one was the lobbying for actually cultural workers. And uh, what I actually mentioned yesterday, this is one of the symptoms also that uh, I would like uh, uh, to tell about, that actually um, the idea of this organization was to make the, the status of cultural worker actually better. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, this was a kind of result of this uh, next uh, step that uh, came after the processes of privatization and the new neoliberal turn actually that happened. The first one was with the privatization that came uh, in the factories and industrial sector and uh, a lot of workers there without jobs and uh, they actually, this lower <coughs> classes go even, uh, be, become even lower and then with the next neoliberal step we have a, a attack on the middle class and cultural workers are uh, staying in that line actually and when they start being actually attacked and their position uh, was uh, kind of becoming insecure they start organizing themselves and fight for their own status. So what is kind of also symptomatic for the scene is that all the cultural initiatives like uh, these that are gathered together around the association of independence scene or more left oriented like uh, Solidarnost or Dunja or something like this, this is a totally lack of the working class people at all. I mean, uh, for example, even the left organization, they actually do not have the project that are really dealing with the working class people or representing uh, working class people at all. They are just politicizing these issues and so on, but actually they are all kind of middle class cultural activists. And, uh, <clears throat> and in Macedonia, actually we could say that there is no independence as such, uh, because also being an individual artist, you are not independent from the system. If you would like to be registered as an artist, you need to uh, organize your activity in one kind of uh, how to, legal form. That means that you are kind of small business entrepreneurs, you need to form the company and so on to pay the taxes, to be registered and enter into this system. And it is very difficult to enter in this system, but it's also very difficult to go out <laughs> because closing the company is very difficult. I mean, it's, uh, you need to pass through all the procedures, you need to have someone who will lead your papers and so on. So everything is very much this, uh, structured by the system to put you into that uh, the, to, to say uh, organized uh, system of work, which, is, which would be under the state, under the control of the state. And, uh, and of course, uh, this is a kind of simplica simplification when I'm talking about Yadro, because independent organization, uh, um, the, this Yadro as a kind of association is uh, consists on a lot of these organizations that are very different and this binary di division exists only in principle that the Yadro platform incorporates in itself many transitional forms of organization uh, such as those on uh, that are based on the ideas of uh, bohemian entrepreneurships or uh, some cultural activists that recognize that the ideas of NGO entrepreneurship in culture could today fact as a safer and more profitable way to go on uh, than to be just led by uncertainty of the market uh, competition or employment in the state institution also that is also very much rejected, especially because uh, uh, after such a huge dominance of the one party in the state institutions, it's, it become very, um, how to say, uh, uh, unacceptable to take a position in the state institution because uh, it is very much, uh, it, it is considered as a kind of dirty position uh, because it, it, it is clear that if you take that position, you need to do a lot of compromises uh, uh, to somehow fit into the system. You are actually not independent at all. And 
but what is interesting, when all these associations are uh, gathering together, uh, the, the stronger one become the one that are more commercial somehow, that are uh, more based on the idea of uh, creative uh, entrepreneurships and such a things, because they have a lot of money, they are also supported by the state, and somehow all this network on independent organizations actually goes into that direction to the, the voices of these who are more uh, managerial uh, to say and more uh, uh, they earn more money because they are more connected with the parties or with the private sector they are actually stronger as a voices so uh, this organization yadro is considered as a civic public civil partnerships. So this is one model that is promoted very much on the region uh, and it is usually uh, considered as actually civil, actually uh, public private partnerships because this word civic is becoming very unclear and untransparent. What does it mean civic and is there something that is uh, cohesive to the society, because in socialism there uh, uh, we have a uh, the notion that is called social property. It means that uh, actually it was a kind of cohesive power of the collective, uh, being part of some something that exists for all of us actually. But in capitalism uh, there was no such a cohesive element, and even if starting to be organizing you know this kind of group initiative that are claiming that are civic and more general for everyone and so on, they're actually in a practice uh, uh, very much based on private interest. So this civic is a really uh, unclear what, what, what does it mean actually, and usually it's private public. And actually I think this is the, the, the one of the definitely characteristic of these uh, processes. And <clears throat> uh, Okay, okay. Uh, okay, but at the, at the same moment while this institution, uh, this organization of the independent scene were organizing, the state was also changing itself. And after some time, uh, the change actually, uh, uh, state made an effort to meet this independent organization, especially taking uh, on itself the characteristic of elite and representative of private capital. So actually, uh, state were becoming much more uh, open and neoliberal and including in itself all these private influences. So actually the change was, uh, the state was changing and the independent sector was somehow changing and at some moment they meet each other and uh, become actually one in Yadro as a kind of private-public partnerships. So that means that actually city gave the space and gave the salaries of the people who work in the, the independent cultural uh, sector. Uh, and actually by doing that, these independents start to operate in this delicate domain of doculturalization or pre-culturalization by the state. And these processes that were supposed to enable all participants for work and exploitation in this sense, the art market and creative industry, were increasingly conducted by the state itself. Um, uh, because state was the one that was rapidly changing and putting uh, uh, actually on itself the, the role of the one who will actually change the society on this a way to, to organize as a system of private-public uh, partnerships and so on. And we could say also that Yadro was somehow initiated also by the city because the first call to organize in the independent scene was coming from the city of Skopje who called independent organization to somehow organize. And if we look through the institutions, here we will see that a lot of the state is leader of these processes of transformation, the institutions very much, uh, because uh, for example, the, the state is putting the managers uh, uh, on the main positions institution to, to reform the institution on this 
a way to make institution exist as a private public partnerships or to just be very much commercial. So the public institutions start to rent the spaces, to, to use all the resources to earn the money to be self-sustainable, actually. And the people who actually work into that system, they are the most uh, wanted managers uh, which are desired by the system. And for example, the one that are existing as a, a creative entrepreneurships and so on who start organizing the spaces that are earning a lot of money are actually invited by the state to, uh, and uh, for them, the positions in the <coughs> state institutions were offered to organize. For example, we had a minister of culture in Serbia until a few years. Uh, who were firstly director of the Philharmony, and he succeeded to organize the Philharmony in the way to earn a lot of money. Whole orchestra, he, he was renting to the TV shows, organizing commercial concerts, and so on. So actually, he succeeded to ask the government for less money and to, to earn the money as an institution, and he later became a Ministry of Culture. So he was offered the possibility, uh, he actually, the, the possibility was given to him to, 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 to change all the system of culture into that way. And this is really some tendency that is very strong uh, now, and uh, this is something that is also detectable here in Macedonia and on a very high way. Um, and, <clears throat> and what is here kind of problematic, and I would also uh, like to uh, say is that uh, we usually consider state as a public. What is uh, really problematic in a sense because after some time state actually become the, 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 the guard of the private, actually not of the uh, public. And by fighting for this kind of uh, interfering with the state, uh, we are really close to enter into that trap to enter in all these state structures that will lead us into this neoliberal uh, system of culture and so on, not actually the social. And, <clears throat> um, and after the fall of socialism, the intensive transformation of social ownership into the state started, and the process of privatization of state property under the patronage of the ruling parties by creating a network of private-public partnerships. <clears throat> The state has been increasingly becoming private while it was still considered as public. For this and for many other reasons, it became difficult here to make distin distinction between the state and the society. The social, following the fate of social property, become pretty shapeless, erratic, and difficult to catch. So we actually don't have a society. By uh, uh, entering in the uh, umbrella of state, all this civil initiative, cultural initiative, and so on, we don't have any more organization that will really deal with the society. What is society? And can we at all talk about society anymore? Or we have only private interest and we have a state interest? And uh, now I will a little bit cut because I see uh, I'm out of time. Uh, we, uh, two offered for the institutions, uh, uh, two possibilities for the institutions are offered, or to be creative entrepreneurs, to earn the money to make a business, creative industry, so on, or to be state institution. Uh, there is no actually the next one. And what is really important, all these procedures are really supported through these, uh, <clears throat> how to say, above national structures of EU uh, that are uh, very much financing all these structures, also foreign embassies and so on, all this transformation to go into that way. And actually, when we are saying about state, I don't mean only national state, that is almost doesn't exist anymore because our states in the Balkan become kind of NGOs that are financed by IMF and all these structures, and there is no independence even of the state. But they are more dependent of these uh, above national structures. And this is a whole huge domain that is really problematic, and the influence of these domains here in Macedonia are very strong, especially today when we are living in a, such a period of strong globalization that are changing. And what I would like now to a little bit to switch on the
Eh, this doesn't work actually. Ah, okay, okay. I would like to show one cultural center, what is really important. And I think this is something that should be, should exist more as a kind of a reminder to all of us, what can happen if we only stay under the state. Uh, there is a house of culture in Ilinden. What is, um, this is, um, this house of culture was formed in the 50s and had a really long history that I mentioned yesterday a little bit, but uh, in some moment it was totally abandoned uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the government of that village decided to totally destroy that and to build totally new uh, uh, cultural center. And this cultural center was uh, looking like a space shuttle in this small village that has only like a 4,000 and a half people, villagers, and more of the people are working into the economic zone. You see, there is a several economic zone, the gray zone. This is economic zone where a lot of uh, foreign corporations are operating like uh, Johnson & Johnson and so on, chemical industry, raffinery and so on. And uh, here the cultural center is really totally bizarre. Like, it is totally empty. People are actually don't coming there. And they have a huge gallery, huge conference hall. I mean, it is a, uh, and there is also room for translation and so on. And I ask who is coming here? They said the corporations. I mean, it is actually a house of culture that is totally financed by public money and everything, but actually in the practice is totally used for a dominant economical purpose that state is actually controlling. Uh, and it is totally, and I think this is really something that is the future actually of our institutions if we don't change something <coughs> structurally. And, <coughs> but actually it's not future, it's today. And it is really huge, there is a bar that is used when some businesses are going on, investors are coming, they have a meeting there and uh, uh, a lot of programs are going on there, but all the programs is totally separated from the people. Uh, people almost do not come there. And they have a huge hall. I mean, this is village. This is totally, uh, I mean, doesn't fit into that space. They have a very small library, and uh, the lady that is working there told me that there is only seven people who are visiting the library. And also in the first hall, there is a huge gallery with the um, walls that are moving, like uh, for really kind of contemporary exhibitions. And also there are industrial map in the gallery and these kind of images. So actually this was my presentation. It should be a much longer, but I see we are just out of time and uh, actually I'm not that happy how I started, but I will stop here. <laughs> Okay, is there is some question or something? It's dark. I, I'm not sure, in the introduction, you said that after that Yugoslavia, socialist Yugoslavia, um, during the, I don't know, second half of the 70s, you mentioned, you, and you mentioned free market. Yes, Is that, yes. I'm not, sh you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure whether we can really speak about free market at the time. I think the market had a certain kind of elements of circulation of goods, promotion of goods, advertising, but <clears throat> basically all the factories or all the economic companies were somehow regulated by the local authorities or state authorities. And there is, I think, <clears throat> concerning self-management at the time, <clears throat> because it was 
I, I'm not, you know, like I'm, I'm not completely sure what was, because the new legislation on the self-management management was introduced in 75 after the constitution 74 was um, oh, kind of accepted, confirmed, I, I don't know what is the term. <clears throat> and <clears throat> at, the mm -hmm. at the time, in this second half of the 70s, the new kind of concept of self-management was the, for the first time extensively introduced on, uh, also in the cultural institutions. And the cultural institutions, as far as I know, kind of fell into some kind of uh, desperate disintegration of organization it was impossible to keep, for example, I know for, from the theater companies that... Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh, he, oh, yeah. What I know from the Slovenian situation at the time is that basically it was hard to keep actors in the houses because they, the kind of, the, this, Self-management was in, in, in understood also as a, some kind of uh, self-organization. So basically, actors would they would have salaries in the houses, but they would be around shooting films, working on television, and so on. This was one thing. The other thing is that the the self-management councils were responsible for confirming repertoires in the theater. So you had the situation that basically the cleaning person at the one, at the one period at the, the, at the end of 70s was basically refused the seasonal repertoire because she claimed that the repertoire is ideologically problematic. So basically, yeah. I mean, you had a kind of, you, you had a total disintegration of, of, this, of, the, of the system at the time. And, but this was, this self-management in cultural institutions, which were 100% subsidized and had very little profits, is something completely different that the self-management in the companies which had uh, the workers there had a, had a right to basically claim what they will do with the 70% of the profits that they would make. Yeah. And, uh, but in, because you mentioned this kind of taxi Drivers. I'm not sure what, what, if taxi uh, taxi services were uh, private. I don't think so. So I don't know. You know I, I'm cooperatives. Zadruge. Uh -huh. I mean, what what I want to stress out that basically this um, this period from the let's say economic reforms in '65 on. It's full, it's really full of um, contradictions. And uh, yeah, and we have, have to be very pre precise what we claim from the nowadays kind of perspective. I think, I think in terms of cultural institutions, basically I don't know any study which would kind of focus on this, on this period and all those uh, ridiculous stories would be very, very kind of, um, it would be good to collect them at a certain point. Also to understand why NGO sector is getting form at the, at the time. So just please. Okay, I'm sorry if I was not, uh, uh, how to say that, uh, uh, clear enough and also I try to be very short and of course it is very controversial and I was trying uh, uh, to show actually exactly that that uh, we couldn't say that uh, the cultural institution at that time were totally dependent nor totally independent this was my kind of focus and I absolutely realized that it is it was like that you know as you say but of course it is um, it is uh, controlled by the state, and I told that I said that uh, the uh, cultural system. Yeah. 
Yeah, but uh, at that time we could s talking about state party, actually, not only about state, nor only about party. It was one. Federal legislation and exactly this in the 1980s became so complicated uh, that it was this kind of bureaucratic system couldn't kind of sustain its, its or its, yeah. Couldn't. Yeah, it was a kind of social uh, welfare system, let's say like that. But uh, uh, actually, Yugoslavian socialism really. Uh, 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 open itself toward the uh, market economy since the 60s. I, uh, now I, I can't, uh, to be honest, remember with what kind of constitution or congress or something like this, but I was part of this, uh, some kind of workshops that were reading these processes, how actually the entering in the market system was organized. But actually the economy was working on that way, like you had in one, I don't know, in Macedonia, we're producing one product, and uh, I don't know, in Slovenia, another one, and they were kind of fa fighting. And the prices were formed in, uh, for example, if there is a two products, according to some kind of market uh, mechanism. It was a kind of market, you know, and some areas were organized through the market, of course, most of other are not. In terms of, uh, the, the, uh, and in terms of analysis of economy, there is this very, very, very good book of Patrick Heider Patterson, Bought and Sold, Living and Losing the Good Life in Socialist Yugoslavia, which is kind of, it goes through, with a, a lot of data, goes through these ma uh, changes in an in, in economy, which, is, which are very kind of, he calls it kind of consumeristic socialism, uh, exceptional socialism and he and, and of course there was there were elements of the free market but not really and this became problem in the 1980s because the uh, the because of the financial crisis in the 1970s in the international market because of energetic crisis with the oil in the 70s and so on and also because because Yugoslavia took some loans in the in the um, Wall Street, and uh, after these Volcker shocks in '78, it it was impossible to pay them back. I think Danilo, you took such a heavy, huge uh, task, which uh, uh, is problematic to be realized. Not because of you, but because of us who didn't make preliminary research that would feed you global research. My suggestion generally would be for you, and that you will see how all of your thesis about free market, etc., is going to fall down, to focus only on visual arts. The research of Trivo Injic in 80s in Yugoslavia has shown, and he explicitly said that in this published book, that the precarity of visual artists in socialist Yugoslavia was huge. So we very often take examples of theaters and those what you are t telling, but theaters have been, I mean, uh, taking the numbers of the people employed in and so on, it was really not relevant in a sense. Yes, they misused the self-governance, was not following accountability or, uh, uh, how can I say, responsibility. It was massively misused and it's still misused as a tradition in Serbia, not everywhere, not in Slovenia, for example, but in Serbia, a right to refuse the role in a theater is endless. So there are actors who for 
five years refused. Not that they haven't been offered, they refused. Why should I act? I don't care, I'm going to do a movie and have a salary. But I think the more important thing is not to go in a trap that self-government was something which existed as it was written. So I participated, I lived this period. I know even without being a member of the party, so not having this kind of political credibility in collective, if I really would like something, I'm a talkative person, I could persuade not only cleaning ladies, but also the other colleagues and professors. And yes, that was the truth. Everyone was, for example, where to spend our extra in income. On salaries, cleaning lady would vote for a salary. Professors of drama art would vote for making the theater hall. And we, young assistants, we stood up and we voted for social housing, for the apartments. We say we don't know, we don't have where to live. So you had different interest. You can say now it was a market interest, yeah, because we, somebody needed money, somebody needed resource for work, because professors of film directing, they have extra honorarium for them. Salary of university was insignificant, and so on. So yes, if you compare film business in Yugoslavia, that was the film business, and that was a market. If you compare, uh, I know that none of us knew to respond to the question in 1973 when I entered university, which was the most, uh, how would say, box office money, best movie. And then, because we are in Skopje, I'm going to tell it now, we start saying like uh, different, Rubljov, this, that, all what we know that was the best in last year. Professor laughed and said some title. And then none of us knew for the title. Macedonia film imported, it was a Bollywood movie. If even today nobody knows that in Yugoslavia, socialist, the most earning film on the box office, because we neglected those data, we had those data what we prized and so on. So it's so complex. My suggestion would be that you focus on visual arts, that you really see what was the market which started to appear. First galleries, us gallery and others in Belgrade. And how this market collapsed, why and so on. So it is interesting to, to know. Yeah, actually I was a little bit start researching these things uh, because my focus came actually from the present, from the situation that we have now, these relations uh, uh, that are going on at the moment. But actually I start researching by, because there was no anything written in the visual field of visual art, I start talking with the people uh, in uh, Belgrade I've seen about this scene. And actually what I realized from their talk, this is also something that is part of the talks. And all the things that I was saying here, it's not kind of facts because uh, uh, it is actually my story is based on the talks with the people and this is the only one research that I was using. They told me, for example, that uh, Student Cultural Center in Belgrade was actually as a kind of hub that was actually sending the artists on the Western art market from the 70s and so on. For example, for some artists, there was a situation that the whole industry uh, was actually engaged to, to build a huge, uh, like a megalomaniac, cultures that were then exported on the West and so on. So Yugoslavia was also in the field of visual art starting in a sense to enter in this kind of, uh, I mean, this kind of economical logic that actually other countries still today, I mean, have. But actually it was partly organized, I mean, it was maybe we could say it was organized totally by the state and also we can say this is totally part of this uh, world tendency of that time that Yugoslavia was struggling on the global markets uh, for its own, okay, sorry. But of course, I absolutely agree that uh, this is something that uh, I really need to more enter in. Thank you.